Uh, next up, to hear from a, a logistics service provider on uh, what, what's happened and how the industry might develop, I'd like to welcome to the podium Bradley Jacobs, the Chairman and CEO of XPO Logistics. Thank you and good morning. How are you? Good. That's great. I got a call from Louis about six months ago. And he said, do you want to come back and speak at the conference? I said, I'd love to. I'm kind of busy. I don't know if I can make it. He said, no, you're going to come. I'm going to put you on the first panel right up. You'll have 500 people in the room. How could I decline that? I'm a ham. I like speaking in front of 500 people. He said, but here's the catch. You cannot give a commercial an advertisement for XPO Logistics. You have to talk about something deep, something stimulating, something entertaining, something that's going to change the minds of the, the group. I said, I can't promise that. I can promise that I'll try, and I'll do the very best I can. So what I came up with was uh, excerpts from a book that I and a very good friend of mine, Lucy Peterson, wrote, but never published, about seven, eight years ago, when I was transitioning out of my previous company, United Rentals, and I had a, there's a rare moment in my life where I actually had some free time and we, we wanted to write a book about, the title was, The Most Important Things That Have Happened in the Last 13.7 Billion Years, asterisk, The Unauthorized Biography of the Universe. And the concept was, how do we look up what are the biggest things that have happened over the last 13.7 billion years, as far as we know? And how do you take the bazillions and bazillions of things that have happened and just pick out like enough that can fit into a book uh, an inch and a half thick? Turns out, what we thought was a very original idea was not very original at all. And there's a whole field called big history. And it was very easy to research this, just going on the internet and just reading books and papers. And so what we did is we just extracted from those different aspects of the the recounting of big history from different fields and different points of view, and picked out what we thought were the most important things. I cannot summarize that whole book in 12 minutes, but I can distill it down to one work stream, one theme that was in the book that I think is very relevant to our industry, which is technology. And technology, I'm defining here in this presentation as tools, the things that humans use the hundred billion brain cells we have in that three pounds of jelly to create tools that make life easier and more efficient. So that's the kind of like a general concept I'm using for technology. Tools that we, the, the process by which human beings use their neurophysiology to create tools to make life better. And there have always been naysayers when it comes to new technology. Very few people look into the future of what the stream, and sometimes the trends are so clear, but we still don't, we still don't agree with them. We just, for one reason or another, we have a bias of wanting to stay with just what it is and refusing that things are going to change. And I used to be an oil trader decades and decades ago, and I trained lots of oil traders who went on to be very famously successful, and I'd like to take a little credit for their success afterwards because I think I trained them in the psychology of oil trading, which is what happened in the past is totally irrelevant. The only thing you need to focus on is what's the major trend? Is the market going up or is the market going down? If it's going up, go long something. If it's going down, short something. And focus on where it's going forward. People have a hard time doing that. I have a hard time doing that. And there's always people who, who when you show them the technological trends and how that's going to disrupt our life and change our business and maybe replace everything that we're doing and everything we think is so important, uh, people don't, don't agree with it. Let me give you some examples uh, on these slides. In 1943, Thomas Watson, who was then the chairman of IBM, said, quote, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. That's a quote. Google it. Western Union, in, in 1876, thought that the telephone had, quote, too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. In 1830, Martin Van Buren, who was the governor of New York and went on to be president of the United States, 
thought that the speed of 15 miles an hour for railroad carriages was too dangerous and that people weren't intended to travel at such breakneck speed. And then Newsweek in just 1995 was bearish on the internet and said, quote, even if there was a safe way to spend money over the internet, it's missing that most important ingredient of capitalism, salespeople. So, truth in advertising, I didn't, I didn't find these quotes. I got these from my good friend John Larkin, who's the hardest working and very influential analyst at Stiefel Nicholas covering this industry. And I found them very relevant to the presentation I'm about to give. I also think what's relevant is a quote that one of my esteemed and highly respected competitors who out of respect and courtesy shall remain nameless said last year, an app wouldn't be able to handle all of the intricacies of freight transportation. I don't fear being put out of business by an app. Well, I do, because I think that Google really does have a, have a chance, not a, not a certainty, but does have a chance that as things evolve, they disrupt the OEMs, the tier one suppliers to the OEMs, the three PLs, the four PLs, and all the carriers. And I'll, and I'll develop this theme as, as we go through the slides. How many people can actually read the slides? Okay, good, because it's imp imp important to see them. You'll see a lot of dates. And I'm just picking out two or three things from each slide that I think will illustrate the point. So let's start with the history of technology, which I'm pegging at about two million years ago. Forget the 13.7 billion, boom, let's just go to two million years ago when the first stone tools were made from split pebbles. When Lucy and I did our research, we couldn't find anything that fit the definition of technology using the three pounds of jelly in the brain to you make tools to make life easier, more efficient. Using that definition, that was the first thing we could find. Two million years ago, stone tools were made from split pebbles. There was a million years between those first stone tools and the next major technological development that we could identify, fire. And of course, fire was, was huge, many game-changing applications, including getting more nutrition from cooked food and the health benefit, the longevity from that, to lighting and heating the environment, to warding off predators, so fire was a big one. But notice as we go through the slides that it starts off two million years ago, the next big thing is like a million years later. And as we go through the slides, there's a real clear trend here of they're coming faster and faster and faster and more impactful and more impactful. So about a half a million years later, about 500,000 years ago, man built the first shelters. Global trading started about 100,000 years ago. Then lots of inventions started coming out of Asia, and China in particular was extremely creative. You had the abacus in 1000 BC, the first coins around 635 BC, and the compass and gunpowder a few hundred years after that. The time gap between inventions then starts speeding up even more. And in 1440, big invention, the printing press. It was the next big thing at the time, and it was a very big thing because it gave us the ability to transfer informa information and to communicate with everyone else on the planet very widely, very efficiently. It was the beginning of mass communication. Transportation, very relevant to this conference, began in a significant way in 1662 when Blaise Pascal invented the public bus and that was 6,000 years after the wheel, but only 200 years after the printing press. And this was quickly followed by the invention of the steam engine what we could now call the genesis of intermodal. A hundred years later, Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity, and six years later came the first self-propelled road vehicle. And here the pace of transportation technology developments picks up quite a bit. The first steamship made the first transatlantic crossing in 1838. In 1839, Charles Goodyear developed a way to make rubber tires. Now in 1876, another big one, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. In 1885, Daimler invented the first four-wheeled automobile. And soon after, Rudolf Diesel invented the diesel engine. In 1896, Daimler built the first truck. 1908, huge year for transportation. You had Henry Ford use the assembly line to introduce the Model T auto. The Wright brothers achieved the first airplane flight. And just two years later, customers trusted planes to ship their freight when a plane transported commercial freight for the first time. In 1914, barely six years after the introduction of the Model T, electric traffic lights were invented. 
1936, a rail provider transported a truck trailer for the first time, the origin of container transportation. And the pace again starts to pick up even more with bigger, faster technological developments. 1937, Frank Whittle invents the jet engine. 1940, England uses the first operational computer in World War II. The, US, the United States gets in on the technology action, rolling out a general purpose computer in 1946 and the first commercial jetliner in 1949. 1955, 19 years after rail first applied the container concept, the first container ship is built. Notice that rail adopted the containers before ships. Computer technology is getting better, more compact, the silicon chip in 1959, the mini computer 1963. Xerox develops the first PC, the first personal computer in 1973. We take it for granted PCs. They haven't been around that long. And then computers infiltr infiltrate a multitude of applications. Mobile phones in 1981. It was a new thing in 1981. I had one of the first mobile phones. It was about this big by this big by this big. It had a huge antenna. We put it in the car. You had a dial for about an hour before you would get through, but it cost four thousand something dollars, which then is, was a lot of money, and it hardly worked. And it was a great conversation piece. And it evolved now to these little tiny smartphones that we have. 1983, Microsoft Windows, big invention, as well as GPS technology for civilian use. The 3D printer was invented in 1984. Now the pace of technological innovation snowballs. Email. 1996, after Microsoft had just rolled out Windows 95 the year before. 1997, became, you had the predecessor to text messaging, instant messaging. Remember AOL, IM, as well as video phone technology. And in 1998, Google was formed, quote, to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful, unquote. Just 17 years ago, IBM introduced the first speech recognition software, which today, of course, is involved into Siri and other, and Dragon, and the ability to talk to your car to make phone calls and talk to your car to get directions. And technology then started to get social. Facebook launched just 11 years ago. YouTube followed in 2005, literally just a decade ago. Nine little years ago, saw the first tweet tweeted. Touch technology was introduced just in 2007 with the iPhone. The iPad was introduced just five years ago. And today, the most recent technologies that I think are most relevant to this conference include wearable technology, autonomous vehicles, advances in 3D printing, drone delivery, machine-to-machine -machine communication, and the Internet of Things. It's a lot, really exciting time to be living. We're at, at a point where for the last two million years, humans have been using their brain to develop more and more technology. The technology is getting better, it's getting faster, become more impactful, more social, disrupting, changing, and faster, smaller amounts of time between new inventions. Fast forward 20, 30, 40 years ago, Everything, and think about everything that each of us do in this room, whether we're manufacturing things, whether we're shipping things, whether we're handling logistics in facilities, whether we're a 4PL, a 3PL, everything that we're doing has a strong possibility of being disrupted by that thing that was predicted not to have legs to it, the internet. And at XPO Logistics, which is the only time I'm mentioning it, so there's not a commercial for XPO Logistics, but I have to get a little plug in. We, we are now moving about 90,000 shipments a day globally. And pro forma for the Conway acquisition, that'll go up to about 150,000 shipments a day. And our goal is to embrace technology, keep spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars a year in technology, have the brightest minds thinking forward, futuristic, thinking objectively about what could be disrupting us and get ahead of that curve. And that was my attempt at making a stimulating 12-minute presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>